I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. I'm Arthur Boyle of Performance Appraisal Services. We're residential real estate appraisers with a company founded in 1994 by Mike Gianelli and I in the basement of my house in Malden. We've since grown to have offices in Malden and Pembroke. We serve the Eastern Mass counties, including Cape Cod. A good client for us is an attorney or a private landowner or a private property owner who's going through a probate process or a divorce division of property. Call us at 781-293-6900. Ask for Arthur Boyle or Amanda Boyle Grazioso. Our first name is Performance. Yeah. I am. This one recording. Oh, yeah. The meeting is now open. Um, please note that this meeting is being made available to the public for an audio recording. Do we have our audio recording? Yes. Which will be used to ensure an accurate record of proceedings produced in the minutes of the meeting. All comments made in open session will be recorded. I apologize in advance if there's a lot of talking as I'm recovering right now. Um, we are going to reopen uh, the continuance of the public meetings that were started on February 27th, last Monday. There's a public hearing for proposed zoning bylaw amendment to specify that the distance of the center protection district's extent from the relevant ways is exactly 300 feet, no greater than 300 feet. And the public hearing for proposed zoning bylaw amendment that would eliminate the mixed use development option in the center protection district. Both of those public hearings are continued from February 27, 2017. We're running the two public hearings concurrently, as was um, discussed at the prior meeting. So, everybody have any comments? We do have a new package tonight um, that just sort of lays out the map of the Center Protection District based on the current zoning map. Um, it does indicate that the expectation at that time that someone drafted the zoning map was that it was a 300 foot setback in the Center Protection District. Um, it also shows the map of the parcels in the Center Protection District. There was some discussion at the last public hearing as to how many parcels would actually be affected by these zoning bylaw amendments. Um, so Matthew has copied for us the map from um, that district so you can get a sense of scale. So we have that in front of us. Um, and we have the proposed amendments and selected pages from the current zoning bylaws to compare. Does anybody have any comments they want to make, or should we wait and see if the, the public participants have anything to comment? All right, we're going to open it up for public comments. I see there are some members of the public here, so I don't know if anybody has a comment that they want to make. Mr. DeMarzo? Thank you, Robert DeMarzo, 42 Mattachisa Street, Trevor Nassus Realty Trust, 2. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, sorry I couldn't be here last week. I was out of town and it had been rescheduled from when I could have been here. Uh, but I was able to listen to the uh, YouTube uh, video provided by the cable people. Um, I guess my first question is, uh, some of this pertains to the 220 Center Street project of uh, Mr. McGill. I was wondering what the planning board's thoughts are on that project. Well, I think what we said last time is that that is still that site plan is still before the planning board and the planning board is still planning to consider that site plan um but we the public hearing for that site plan is not until next monday i believe, next monday. I believe it's next monday so those com you know discussions that are specific to a site um would be um discussed at that hearing um so i guess my question then is and i wasn't clear what would, if this bylaw goes through in April, what happens to the McGill property 
proposal and the seal and Daisy. Are they grandfathered or are they no longer able to do what they have been working on for a period of time? Well, I, I honestly, I don't know the answer to that question. I think that's a question for our council, but... Um, well, you really should if you're proposing a bylaw that is going to affect people, property owners in the center of town, where they have their hard-earned money and other people, you should know the answer to that. Well, but this bylaw is not directed at specific projects. This bylaw is directed at the district as a whole. The, the site plan for Mr. McGill's project is coming up um, pretty immediately, so we'll know the answer to that before this gets voted on at town meeting. We'll know how that site plan review is going. As far as I know, we do not currently have a new site plan for review on um, the other pro okay. the other property that you're talking about. Okay. So, um, uh, Mr. Sealand's property. He had come in and talked to us, but the site plan, the only site plan that exists on that property is from 2005, I want to say. Somewhere around there. Somewhere around 2005. So. So that property has a unique issue as to whether or not that site plan is still in place. I agree with that. And that's very specific to that property. I don't think um, I don't think it's going to change our discussion about this bylaw amendment either way. With Mr. McGill's property, I think the expectation is that we would try to work through that site plan process and we may be able to resolve that before the town meeting votes on this bylaw. Um, and, and is yeah. that a fair I want to See if the board agrees with me on that because I'm, I'm yes. giving my opinion. But no, I, I certainly yeah. concur with that. I hope that's so, the case because we got to do what's best in the, for the community and the town. And there were some inaccuracies, not necessarily intentional, that the board talked about the last meeting. And I want to clear that up with with facts, not just we think the intent was. Uh, there was some discussion that the Center Protection District Committee that uh, Brian was on, mm -hmm. the Planning Board Member Ben Riper, and Jerry Dempsey was on. Well, that this we line... We wanted to. We also oh, have some other members here. Okay. I wasn't bothered. That's right, you were. That's right. And that this language somehow got in there and we weren't sure right, how... Right, how it got in there. It got there. I was that, wondering, too. That's not true. And the language... We, we talk about, there was talk about the intent. I don't like when somebody says intent. I like to read what the words say. In 1970, you the glasses on, I'm getting old here. Um, in 1977, certified copy by the town clerk, the zoning bylaws, the, the section of Mattachese and Center Street was business A. There was no center protection and it referred to 300 feet deep, 1977. And I can get this to your system. That was 1977 right? 1970? Town bylaws. 77? 77. 1979, legal notices, went to town meeting. Center Protection District, this overlay district is created to provide visual qualities, etc. It shall include all that land that has frontage on the following ways to a depth of 300 feet from said ways whichever is greater. This existed in 1979. It was specifically, not my opinion, it's very clear that it was specifically put that language to go from 300 feet to whichever is greater. What does it mean to whichever is greater? Whichever is greater. I agree with you that I don't like Whichever is greater. You may not like the language, but it says all that land, 300 feet or whichever is greater. All that land. Beyond 300, Beyond 300 feet. feet. Some of those lots are deeper, as you know. Right. So I, I always thought the language was kind of vague and and, and not clear in the way it was drafted. Well, I, I think, uh, your own engineer Merrill gave an interpretation to Mr. Dutson a couple of years ago that it was, it was very clear. Um, so that was what went on back so, then. So it's your understanding that it could go back a mile deep? Well. If it's 300 or whichever is greater, and we could reality, expand the lot no. as far well, but we could. Ex but Mr. McGill had explained to us is that they had, or Mr. Galvin, I don't recall which, that they had actually appended another piece of property that was behind that lot. So now that lot is bigger. So theoretically, if the, if it's 300 feet or whichever is greater, it could keep grabbing land well, no, into you'd end one up with lot. Frontage on you then, like in my property, I ended up the frontage would be on Laurel, which is in residential. But I, it also, you know, so you, you where can you go back a mile where you 
wouldn't end up so you have frontage on another street outside of maybe you should try to amend it that only one lot could be attached or that no lots can be attached can but I, leave it alone can i finish okay so m jumping ahead of myself yeah. what i'm hoping that you folks will do tonight is postpone this come back next april maybe even the fall getting the people that are involved in the center of town and the rest of the community with input because there was no input until tonight or last monday this was done at, at the last minute and come up with language that addresses your concern it can only go back so far or existing parcels or whatever i, I believe it can be done in reality although that chart shows all these parcels there's only a few that can do the mixed use or maybe even come close the mcgill property the uh, Seelan and dacey the Dutson, which is shy frontage and shy square footage, uh, which makes it problematic because how do you make something... Which one is that? Dutson is across from Jocelyn Farms, next to Smith Excavation. Uh, they're not going to acquire back land, those people, because it's a cemetery, and I don't think you can buy out cemetery plots, last I heard. Um, maybe... Um, well, you do back up to... I mean, this is where you start to get into how could people reconfigure yeah. land, Well, right? no, it backs up to the cemetery. It's a fact. Well, no, uh, I, so you're looking at, is that cemetery Okay, right I'll, I'll get you I'm the specific. To so we're looking at, uh, across from the shopping center, you have, um, starting from the corner, the curve, you have the Rockland Trust, then you have the funeral home, yeah. and then parcel 14, that is 14. 15 is the funeral home. 15A, which is the uh, food broker that's currently for sale, very narrow. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get your sidelines and anything else to work on a narrow piece, no matter how deep well, it is. What if somebody pulls a few of those lots together? That's it, right. Yeah. That's no, right. I know, but you said it yeah. wouldn't work on any of these lots, but well, I'm saying not it going would. Back yeah, not going together. back a mile. But not going back a mile. Side. You're into the cemetery. Right. Right. Same thing with Dutson. It's another Dutson property. Well, then you got the, the tr bank. That land is pretty much done. There's a big drainage easement. Then you have Dutson. The Dutson family has probably owned that land before any of us were born, and they've paid taxes on it. And now it's Jerry Dutson's retirement plan. And you're looking to rezone this, and the McCarthy's too, possibly, that right now they could use that back land for business land. Set, set aside the mixed use. They right. the, use mix, business. the mixed use is, that's what we were trying to separate the 300 yeah. feet from the So the 300 use. feet, you're taking away their retirement, the money that they've paid taxes on for business land for all these years, and you're saying, we're going to take it away because we think this is what the zoning, and it wasn't the zoning. It was very clear. Um, it's still a commercial residential district, and those rights wouldn't be taken away well, because no. of the 300 feet because the 300 feet is just for the overlay district, correct? No. Well, no the, 300 the 300 feet, feet is the whole zone. If it, the whole zone. So what, he, what Mr. DeMars is saying is that if we cut it off at 300 feet, no, I that understand that. this and land could not be used for business purposes, and there's right. no easy way to use it for right. residential, so that land becomes Isn't that Right unusable. now it can be used for business. It's 500 feet back. There was also a comment last week, uh, I think Mr. McGill said, well, can I go back further past the 300 to use it? And it was said, no. In fact, somebody can go back 330 feet. I don't know if you realize that's in the bylaw. But if you split two zones, you can go back 330 feet, not just 300 feet. So that was improperly uh, stated. Um, so so when you look at the ones on Center Street, so I'm looking. I like something there for a second. Okay, go ahead. I pose the question to Mr. McGill's attorney. Could you get relief from the lots in two districts? Mr. Galvin's response was no. So nobody on us on our side indicated what that lots in two zones would be interpreted as in this case. But I went directly to the best legal mind in the room, Mr. Galvin. Okay, well anyway, you I saw his opinion on it and he was his response was no. Mr. McGill would not get relief under that. Well, regardless of whose opinion, the fact of the matter is you can go back 330 feet. If it splits two zones, you can go 30 feet. As you're saying, you're just stating as a fact, Bob? It's a fact. You, you know well, it's in the no, zone. I, I, I've read it, but yes. that might be your interpretation. I went to... Okay. He's Mr. Galvin's town council for the town of Marshall <laughs> and the town of Norwell, and you're disputing him. Mm. All, all I would say is, this is Coletta, how many lawyers win every case? In every case, there's a winning and a losing lawyer. Okay, so, but, anyway, but right, I don't right want to dwell on that. I think we're getting a little distracted on the, the 
the 30 feet either is or isn't added to the zone regardless, and, so, and our commentary here isn't going to change right. that. So I, I would ask you to postpone this, bring everybody together, and show up on town meeting floor with a unified front, because you're not going to have a unified front, I don't think. And I don't think, quite frankly, you're going to get a two-thirds vote, uh, vote on it. But I do think with a unified front, it can be cleaned up, and it can be made to work for everybody and for the betterment of the town. We do need a business community downtown. Nobody, it seems, has wanted the big boxes, and it will never come too big, but a lot. But they do want something. And I do believe in the mixed use. I do believe in different types of housing. The former project that Sealand and Daisy bought from me, I've had people come up to me and they were pleased. Uh, one family, they were able to stay in Pembroke and move into the Sealand and Daisy uh, condominiums. Otherwise, they'd have to move out of town. Another family is a very well known family and the, the, the widow uh, is living there. Uh, so, and I think it was talk about the, the pricing of housing. I don't think this is going to be high end. I, I quite frankly, I don't know what the housing is going to be. But we do need a mix of housing. We do need people downtown. And if you look at all the healthy communities that have healthy downtown communities, Plymouth. Plymouth is hot downtown. Situate is hot. Duxbury is something. They have a mix. So bring everybody together, work on it, and I think you can end up on a unified front of town meeting. I think I think when you say that everyone wants a business center, I would say that some of some of what I've heard, and I'm the newest member to this committee, um, but some of what I've heard over the last couple of years is that um, the mixed use is not a use as of right; it's a use as of special permit under the Center Protection District, and so the Planning Board, as of today, could deny a special permit for mixed use. It's Unless you meet the steps uh -huh. that grant the special permit. There are certain, if you meet those special permit provisions, then... Well, but it's up for the planning board to determine whether or not the, um, the um, special permit requirements in terms of the mix and how it adds to the district are, make it, make it um, advisable for us to issue a special permit. So that's currently, it's a special permit. It's not a use as a right. Whereas doing an office clinic or a medical office, things like that are uses more or less as a right, subject to kind of engineering site plan type stuff. But the mixed use is a special permit process um, that is within the jurisdiction of the planning board right yeah. now. Our, I think the concern that I've heard, sort of what I was getting to, is that the concern I've heard is with business districts, unless you start to have a certain amount of, of small businesses, particularly when you're trying to do small businesses and not huge box stores, that if you don't get a certain amount of them, you never get the synergies that you need I agree with you. to build on each other, right? That it takes a certain number of those in the, the, the uh, development at the stop and shop and that, that corner has added some amount of synergies, but until you get a few professional office buildings and some newer buildings, Bridgewater Savings Bank was an, was an addition there, but until you get some, you're, you're, you're kind of frittering away a little bit of prime land for the town in terms of developing a small walking business district. Not a district like we have over at um, no. Route 3, but a smaller walking district. Um, and so I guess it, you know, having a 300 foot frontage, having having it not be mixed use, seemed to be more tied to the original intent of the Center Protection District building that kind of business area. 250, not 300, 250. Huh? 250 feet frontage, not 300 foot frontage. I'm at 300 foot depth. Yeah, okay. That's really good. Um, the, there was some mention of maybe redoing the master plan. The master plan really isn't, isn't that old. As a matter of fact, Mr. Wandel was on the master plan committee. And it talks about, um, if you want, I can bore you with it, but it talks about bringing in the mixed use into the downtown area. So once again, I think if you change the depth, you're hurting people. It's going to hurt potential business. People have paid taxes. If you work with everybody, come up to try to avoid what you think may at some point create excesses. And I agree, you don't want somebody to go back a million miles. But 
In reality, it's very difficult to buy somebody out five houses back. I mean, look at Greenwood Avenue. Steve Curley, he's right up front. So you're going to buy every house on his street and have this little strip or the other side of the first church and buy every house behind that. It looks, there's a lot that it can't work. When the business zone was changed on Route 139, I was a vocal opponent of changing it to Business B. It was Business A because it went from 150 feet and 40,000 to was it, 200 feet and bigger setbacks and, and all this. And they said, it's not going to work because for somebody to do something on 139, they had to accumulate a lot of parcels to conform. And guess what? Nothing's gone on there because you can't conform to it without buying three or four or five different parcels. And you, you, maybe you should take a look at that too and see if there's some way to, to improve that, that zoning there. So the, the master plan does refer to it, and, and I, I respectfully ask that you come well, back. One of the issues that we've seen with the mixed use is that we haven't seen the ratio of mixed use to residential as in the bylaws mm. come before us without a variance being sought yeah. to see some relief, meaning that we haven't seen the ratio of mixed use really be what we expected it to be. Now, any project that would come before us that had the ratio of mixed use to the residential um, met the setbacks and everything else, we'd be happy to see. But we haven't seen it. Uh, moreover, we've seen some other projects where the, you know, the commercial piece of it has been postponed almost indefinitely. And I understand there's some market, you know, market things in play there, but we haven't seen it. So but, you know, that's been a reason why we've taken a look at this and try to take a look at it from a different perspective and say maybe the mixed use piece is just not panning out because the market either isn't ready for it or wants it um, and we're not seeing the projects come before us. So, I mean we thought I think when the Center Protection District was proposed that that would spur a lot of the kind of development that we wanted to see there but in fact it spurred some development that we wanted to see but not with the correct ratio of mixed use to uh, residential and that's been a big issue. And some of the feedback from the hearings, I, I have never attended the McGill hearings. Well, I did obviously attended my own, uh, and the previous one when I owned the McGill property was from the abutters and people that weren't abutters even, that they wanted a lower amount of business. And that's what I believe the zoning board used their powers, which they have the power to do this. They have the power to do exactly what they did. And they used their powers and said, this is what we're hearing from the people. This is what we think makes sense. Now, well, actually, I they can't. Don't, they, they don't. They don't. <laughs> well, they have the power to issue a variance. They don't have a yeah. power to issue a special permit. No, they don't. Or, or, so, or they, they issue the variance. They or, issue the variance. Right. So, all yeah. they've done so far is issue a variance. They haven't ruled on site on special permits or on right, that's your site opinion. permits. Yeah. For, for this district, yeah. Um, Bob, you and I worked on the project years ago. And Andy just hit the nail on the head. It sounds great on paper or whatever. I was for it. You were for it. We worked to the, uh, together to see this adopted. So um, your recollection and mine are pretty much the same. But Andy hit it on the head when he said, we just don't have the mix that we anticipated the business element compared to high component of residential only. And even if the bylaw is open, which it is, to much interpretation, apparently we gave too much to another board to determine what was intended in the bylaw. But it hasn't worked to our advantage as a town center yet. And I'm, my general belief has come over the years, and I was a solid defender of this, of this bylaw for many years, uh, is that it's obsolete, in one word. It's obsolete. When you say the people don't want the big box store, well, you've got to stop and shop. And you've got 11,000 square foot CBS. Those aren't little boxes. That's not a big box store. Well, you That's know what I'm saying. Box. No, it's not Walmart. But I don't think we're going to get a Walmart in there, and frankly, I'd be opposed to it. We want the village type businesses. All we're asking for is to meet a happy medium. But if, if whether it's how do you calculate 1.25 bedrooms on the site, or how many units get onto the site, or what ratio of business versus resident, if that's just going to get thrown out the window every time somebody comes in with 
you know, another residential development, um, then, you know, we're missing the point. We're missing the point entirely as a town. And we did have this debate last session about, you know, what everybody's vision of where the center will be five years from now or whatever. It's unknown. But I can tell you that this, as it's been applied in practice, when I say this, mixed use, zoning bylaw, does not meet the bill in any way of what you and I anticipated. And I don't think you can sit there and honestly disagree with me about that. What I will tell you is I felt, and you folks obviously feel that the bylaw needed to be tweaked. And um, before I started the 220 Center Street project, I came to the planning board and I said, look, I'm close to square footage and I'm close to frontage. I don't have enough. And there's things that need to be worked on for the bylaw. What do you think about what, taking a look at it? And I looked the board, at those recently. Pardon? I looked at your request. And it was the board. About a year and a half, almost two years ago. Probably yeah, more than two years ago, because it was before the project. The board said to me, Mr. Clev, the board said to me, just go to the ZBA and get a variance. Oh, no, I never said Oh, yes, you did. No. Uh, no what you, what you, the board said to excuse me, I'm speaking. The board said to me, just go on and get a variance. So what did I do? I spent six months and seven meetings and seven months and six meetings, engineering, architect, worked with the abutters, and went for the variance. And we all know what happened. I ended up in court six and a half hours left in the appeal period. I ended up in court and then said, whoop, made some mistakes, let's start over. Started again, unfortunately, had a very serious injury to my leg. And I said, "This is I can't continue anymore. I don't even know what you know how my leg's going to be after that." I, anybody was more, I could barely stand. I think you folks there, I could barely stand. No, you weren't. Up. So anyway, um, so it didn't. Need, it does need tweaking. It does need. <coughs> so don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Work on it, and nothing's going to be coming before you folks in any great period of time. That's my thoughts. We have some dis disagreements, obviously. Uh, but the fact is, the zoning does go back, and I'll provide copies to the 70s. That was intentional. Is that for the Center Protection District? That the yeah. Center? Uh, Bill Buckley dra drafted the, I've got to give him credit, drafted the Center Protection District way back then. He lived on Warren Ferris. <coughs> something we can do. I've said it. It's not governing. No. Um, Brian, did you want to respond? Do you want to add something to well, the hearing? Well, no, only that, you know, when Bob came to us two and a half years ago, or whatever, every one of the requests that you sought for us to approve and move and reduce in the zoning bylaw were things that eventually you went to the zoning board to get a variance for. So in other words, you only made a proposal to enhance your lot in particular. And that's why the board gave you basically, hey, the whole district. We can't help you. You know, tweak. you can't just take a look at one person. It wasn't one person. It was the whole district. It said no. tweak the bylaw, work on the bylaw. No, so everything that you and half bedrooms doesn't what, work. Exactly what you went to the zoning board to obtain after we gave you the. We don't think this is necessary. You went right to ninety thousand square feet of area because you were prepared to sell land to the housing authority. You went exactly to one hundred and fifty feet or two hundred feet perhaps because you had two hundred nine. You went right down, categorically down the list, to enhance and in wealth yourself. It was very And I'll get the paperwork for the you whole, if you need it. The whole district. And yes, I wanted to sell the land for the housing. <coughs> because they were going to build more senior housing. Again, boy, and they were going to build housing purposes. for the veterans. Oh, 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 o
when you're looking at something like mixed-use in our town, I think you have to look at, okay, now in the last 13 years, how many units of, 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 um, mix, of um, multifamily housing has gone in to the town? And does that influence in the master plan what we still need as a town? Right? And so that was why I was one who has been really pushing to look at our master plan uh, on a larger scale and say, okay, do we have what we need as a town to grow and prosper and um, even at our tax base and have access to services and meet all of the sort of 21st century needs of a town our size. Um, but this bylaw is a little narrower. It's not the grand plan. It's not redoing the grand plan. I think it's trying to go back to what was the vision for the center protection district? Are we achieving it by having mixed use in the in the, in the in the special permit process? And are we achieving it by allowing people to go back further than 300 feet or not? So that's that sort of you know I don't know if it makes sense. There's been um, comment from the public that we. Think about putting this off. I don't. Well, let me make a couple of comments yeah. first on that. So, we have the we have the public hearing process because we do want to get the input and everything else. And um, I, I understand maybe wanting to postpone this for a while, but the public uh, hearing process is precisely to do that. So, with the notification time too. So we we have done that. Um, and I think we probably want to proceed with this and, and see whether it prevails or not at town meeting, but. Um, on the mixed use, I think, uh, judging from where this board is going and some of the input that we've got, I think we want to let that bylaw change either win or lose it on town meeting floor. But looking at this 300 foot and looking at the specific properties that are going to outline them at Keset Street, um, you know, one of the challenges we've also had with some commercial development here is you look at these these parcels and they look kind of perfect for landscape yards, but because they're narrow. We've got a fair amount of landscape yards in the center of town, which, you know, is allowed, but not particularly desirable um, as the only businesses that we, we get there. Um, any ideas as to what kind of commercial use would be workable there with the depth of the lots? Um, because we may want to look at saying from Center Street over to Grove Street that we allow the depth to be deeper. Or I, I, I sort of I was wondering whether we also look at whether it's um, 300 feet or the size of an existing parcel, right? So that we avoid right. sort of how far back could it go, right? Um, uh, which seems more to address some of the concerns while cutting off sort of the risk that this could become out of control in some way. Um, I'm trying to look at. Other than the ones on Mattakesit Street, I'm not sure how many in the district actually go back further than 300 feet. Not many. Yeah. So, in that sense, I guess, um, you know, would the board consider saying 300 feet? Well, what's the depth of these parcels that we're going up here? Maybe, maybe the other approach. This is It's hard to. <laughs> well, I can tell you that my parcel goes back 287.5 feet. So it doesn't affect you? Uh, that particular part does not affect me, no. And my, all my abutting neighbors are approximately the same depth. And that begins at the intersection of Grove Street across on Mattakesit. So go from... Next to Sunshine Pool, right. yeah. and walk towards Danny Smith's property. Yeah. Okay. So you see those four that are, are that's that's about your three hundred foot line. Right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. That, that the, but but the you know I mean. But the rest of them in that line there. Right. Look very obviously cool. exceed it, and we all supported Dan Smith when he wanted to step outside and go back a little bit further. Um, <coughs> You know, and, and to Mr. DeMarzo's point, you can't get any, you, you're not going to be selling, no one's going to be buying the cemetery. Um, you know, so that, that kind of locks those up where they are. They can't be anything else than other what they are for depth. You can't go buy them. 
And if you look at on the other side of Center Street, Sealand's property is roughly bang on 300 feet. So that'll give you an idea of the depth if you carry that line down, up and down Center Street. That'll give you an idea of where 300 feet, which lots are beyond it. And I know that's roughly 300 feet. I see six lots along Manakeesic Street on the north side. And I see the two, one with some girls and one the family that lives next door. Um, what's his name? The stage. The corner of uh, Mountain Ave. Uh, one of those six is also the front that just came for the 7 Eleven store. Right here. There are some, some are severe topography problems in that lot here because it right. takes such an immediate slope yeah. downward. So there are some practical problems. Uh, not too bad on the other lots, but that one's probably the most affected is the 7 Eleven lot. I think that's the one. <laughs> the, fun the funeral home does off see. as well. I see. Uh, yeah, but I don't think right now is where, what the problem may exist at. It's the other five or so lots that could be impacted. Can I show uh, you something? However, Jerry Dutton, 37 Mattachusett Street. Yeah. This is a plan that I had Merrill draw up for our lot. And this is basically, I mean, it's going to show, okay, there's the, what he's saying is that we can get a building in here, this would be Smith's, and then propose a two-story office building back here. And we're utilizing the legal amount of the lot there. How far back is this, you know? I'm not exactly sure with it's 300, but I think my lot's are 500 or something. Uh, yeah, just one. 60 feet. Is that the one that has a two houses on it? Excuse me? Is that the one that has a two, two uh, houses on it now? No. Yeah, the one house. I've got the one house and a barn attached Okay, so you have the one right adjacent that you're in. Yeah, right, right between the bank and, and okay. Smith. Okay. Yeah. Oh, between the bank and Smith. Okay. Right. The older house is close to the street. Right. right. So this would be. Now I don't know if he went back 300 feet on this one or not, but the point is, at 300 feet, this is all landlocked. It's useless. The other an additional 200. At that point. You know, the bank is over here in the back of the bank's property. You know, they've got a they've got some drainage there, but I mean theirs is basically useless. There's nothing I can do because But I'm just saying that three hundred feet, if you're looking to get more commercial in the center of town, it's penalizing. I put that for three hundred. Yeah, to be honest, you know, the idea of building behind buildings has never really been successful. If you notice well, this is just something that he proposed. I'm not saying that this is... And, and, and most would be because of the setback requirement in the center. Unless you're going to put a large parking area to the front. The problem with these six or seven lots in the road is obviously you don't have a heck of a lot of front. So it's all... Somebody's going to come in with something bigger scale that's going to say, oh yeah, you and Smith make a deal. Can come. Yeah, we can work with that. Wasn't there an assisted living facility that came in here at one point? Yeah, they wanted it back. Yeah, there was nothing prohibiting us using it. No, you guys turned it down. We never had well, to do that. Because it went to town, the town meeting, and oh, well, the town meeting. in the town meeting, then they required five acres and. Right. Oh, no, that was in other districts. That wasn't proposed in this district. But they did come to us to talk to us about that. We would move with them to probably make that sure to try to happen. No, that's, that, that, wasn't, that, wasn't, that wasn't my impression or theirs. I remember the discussion. So there was the we, were in, we were in the discussion of, uh, yeah, assisted living, about assisted living, and we, we did come to the, to the point of order with us. And then there was the discussion, well, I think Bob was also looking at his his lot at the time. Well, assisted living there, I think. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I think there was, there was a discussion with the plan. Yeah. 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 Not, yeah. not with that design. Okay. I don't know. No, I mean, on this lot. Right. No. Yes, on, the, on his lot. Yeah. Yeah. On yeah. his yeah. lot. I think I was the original one yeah. that came. Yeah. <laughs> I recall the discussion. And we had a purchase and sale agreement on it, and then the bylaw had to be written, and apparently the medical marijuana over 
took that or you had to get that done. By the time the bylaw was getting written, the buyer backed out and said, we can't wait for it. But you know, they wanted to put a nice, small assisted living in it, which is perfect. The center of town, people can walk to everything. Now that we've got the store, the banks, the hardware, store, I mean, everything's there for them. For the elderly, and what do we have? Just that one. Well, was it going to be assisted living or independent? It was going to be assisted living. Do you have a company that had a good reputation? We looked them up. Right. They built in uh, <coughs> Watertown Center or something. Yeah, they had, and the, uh, they had the several water. projects. Oh, but it was our understanding that it was not, not going to be a lot of the center of town. Because we worked on the drought. So we weren't sure which zones were going to be in certain zones. This wasn't one. Well, I mean, they're going to some residential commercial zone and then the industrial. Yeah, so that's what we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were so what um, this would not have had a point trying to make I think it was just kind of gone over the um, Mr. Dutson, Mr. Smith had a purchaser. We went to the planning board. Uh, planning board said they would draft the bylaw. I think Mr. Van Reicher was actually going to draft it. It never got done in a timely matter that the buyer walked and went. I know. Uh, did they go to Hanson? Is that the one that went to Hanson? Over no, they, Hanson was already in the works. Was it? Okay. Yeah. And what you have now, though, has worked out as well on the horse farm. So it was better than when they wanted to put an industrial park. The horse farm, I guess, yeah. the location. Memory care. Yeah. What? It's memory care. Yeah. What is? The bridges. Yeah, you can't remember. There's, there's a roof <laughs> The horse farm is supposed to be a memory care facility rather than an assistant living facility. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so how do we want to receive the 300 foot? Issue for us. I guess in looking at the existing parcels and existing There's a couple owners. of ways you could work this through. You could go and expand it from 300 to 400 or 400 to all the lot or whatever. Or you can, through this process, adopt it. Yep, we're going to look at some limitation as to the depth of lots, which is not uncommon throughout almost all business districts in town. We're all conditioned on setback of, from the way. Uh, and secondly, we could uh, uh, make a future eligibility date. When does the bylaw go into effect? If you give these people <coughs> a year or something to work, to try to work around your issue, do you have time to try to put something together realistically? <coughs> words, as you said, the, uh, the adoption date, if you will, would be you know, June 1st, 2018, or something like that. Uh, this, I don't want to preclude anybody's building rights, but at some point, you know, again, uh, we have to set a reasonable, in my view, we have to set a reasonable depth to the zone. Um, I agree that the center uh, cemetery obviously is a restriction, and I don't think anybody's going to be able to buy up that land behind that. I hope not, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. What about where your front reside? Uh, here's the... Uh, the issue is, uh, again, is maybe placing uh, 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 an effective date uh, that gives time for parties to try to work out something in terms of conforming to a new potential setback. If not, then obviously um, it's up to the board as to how it would proceed after putting this on town meeting floor for consideration as to whether we would draw, withdrew it or were able to work with the neighbors that are there. Landowners in this case to uh, try to work something out. I guess I would be open to either <coughs> modifying our amendment to um, allow 300 feet or the depth of, a, of an existing of a parcel existing on this date, on the date of adoption, um, or um, having an effective date. I would propose if we're going to go with the effective date option that we say like July 1st, 2018, so we sort of start a new fiscal year. Well, do we, do we need to do that? I mean, no, if, we, if we did the feet or the depth of, the, of an existing parcel as of this date, 
that it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. <laughs> Where we would maybe want to consider the uh, effective date is with the mixed use, because we do have a couple of projects before us. Um, if we made the effective yeah, we date, have one. we have one, right? We have, well, one. we have another one that and a potential other one that could come back before us, which we requested to be open. That's expired. <clears throat> I think Mr. Wandell's right. Bell's idea is an excellent idea, <clears throat> and for uh, Planning Board Member Coletta, I, I like the first part about set a certain date, a depth rather. To say a certain date, you're making a lifestyle decision for the people once again to pay taxes, have lived there, and may not be ready to do something with if they're living in a house or whatever, that they're looking, I can retire in 10 years, my pension is there, so on and so on. Just as some of the people look, I've got this big house, and we're looking to move to something smaller. But you know what your time frame is, and the town would be forcing somebody to make a decision they may not be ready for. So pick a depth, give a time frame for the mixed use, and I think you can end up in town meeting with a winner. Well, to Mr. DeMazzo's point, though, as far as the depth, also the mixed use. I mean, I have a sophomore in high school, okay? My plan is to get him off to college and then utilize the parcel that I've been paying the taxes on and that we've had to help pay for his college and maybe buy myself a little something <clears throat> over in his development. But I don't need the big house, okay? Because I like Pembroke Center. It's nice. <laughs> you, you, you can walk around. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I, I don't know why the, the, to try to take the housing development uh, away from the Center Protection District. It's neat when you get a walking village. Then you get the businesses that you folks are looking for, that everyone's looking for here. Okay, you get the coffee shop. Okay, you get the breakfast place. What can you buy for food in Pembroke Center? If you go out and walk around Pembroke Center, what do you get? Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts or pizza. Yeah, that's it. Okay? And you need to be able to attract that in. But they need a, they need a base uh, of, of a village style uh, of community in order to support the smaller businesses that are tucked in here. Because everyone else, they're going out to the highway. I'm to, sorry, could you give your name? Uh, my name's John Ingram. And in we, which, which address? 59 Mattachusett Street. And, and how big is that property? That property right now does not conform. I have 55,000 square feet, so I have that. <clears throat> I don't have the frontage, but my neighbor wants to sell me his house, and then I do. Okay, but I still wonder if you, how much mixed use you could get on that property. I mean, it doesn't matter. I could put two nice, I, I, I could put two apartments above the house that exists there and have the offices you folks want. There's already two staircases in the place. It's set up for it. It's a no-brainer, okay? But, you know, by you saying no more mixed use in this district, you're, you're reaching into other people's pockets and making decisions for them. Well, but I'm not sure that the mixed use, the <coughs> ratios you're talking about fit with the bylaws that exist today. Excuse me? I'm not sure the ratios you're talking about fit with the bylaws today. That's what I'm trying to understand. What ratios are those, please? Um, <coughs> Absolutely. No, I, I'm just trying to understand the, the property better because part of this is um, so lot size for mixed use development have to have 100,000 right. square feet. That's on me to conform to that. And, and I'm, quite frankly, I'm pretty sure I can because I've been in discussion with people that are around me for years. I, I, you know, I, I understand a man's point of view, obviously. The problem I have, sir, though, is like we have these, <laughs> this Bible, and then a fellow like you wants to put some excuse on it. And you say, okay, that sounds good. That's what's allowed in, the, in that zone. And then you say, but I want 20 housing units. No, I don't want 20 well, housing we units. We don't know what in the end. You, you you have the power to say, no, you can't. You have to conform. Well, this is oh, but then they threaten with a 40B. Yeah, you know, they come <laughs> you know, So all we do keep doing happened too. And, <laughs> yeah, but Pembroke has re Pembroke's reached its affordable just, housing. 40B <laughs> isn't going to... How, yeah. yeah. how, how, how far away are you? Well, the problem is that as other places get 
um, built, built uh -huh. it adds to the ratio, right? So if you add 10 market Would units, you say you're north of 9.5%? Yes. yes. I, w I, I, I know that you are. But we're okay. at a point where, where it's still possible to have something crammed down. And over the next... One affordable housing unit, though? No. Well, 25% of the project has yeah, to meet affordable another, criteria. If another subdivision went into town, and the base would be go there, up. go up, and we'd still be below the 10%. Mm, well, you, I, and to your point, I agree. But 25% of anything that I could put there would have to fall into that criteria. No. If I was, no? If you were doing a 40B. If I was doing a 40B. Oh, why would I want to do a 40B? All 40B does is... Slow me down and piss you off. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Nobody wants to do that. Is that is not people. Yeah. 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 is forced to do 40B. Nobody wants to no do it. No one wants to do it. Well, we have a 68 unit uh, proposal before the board is selected today up on Water Street, so I think somebody wants to do it. Oh, yeah. And we have 9.5% plus of affordable housing stock available to us, etc. So. Well, we have right. the Bird Street project underway at the but same we time. Bird Street, that, so but we also have developments coming up on Taylor Street and Bryson Way that are going to add to the regular. Right. You know, so <clears throat> each time we build the affordable, we also have other houses going up here and there that changes well, I, the mix. I, I understand that, but on the on the 110,000 square feet that I can assemble here, what would that allow me for living units? Under the bylaw? Yes. As written? Yes. Uh, Six. Uh, no. Oh, would, yeah. I'm sorry, what was the amount again? 100,000? 110,000 yeah, yeah, square feet. It would be like eight, eight or nine. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's one per quarter. Eight. One per 10,000 square right. feet. Yeah. One so nine, 10, how many, I, I mean, am I, am I going to try to do a 40B of, for eight units? I, I mean, it's stupid. It doesn't even make sense to go build a project like that. You can't make any money because of you, well, you, can't. you can not on that not on that small amount of units. I mean, just to be clear, it's eleven units, but you also then it can't be more than fifty percent of the development overall, which can't take up more than a certain percentage of the property. So there's so I really can't get that much there, and it does. I I, I have no interest in forty B. I'll sign a piece of paper that said I'll never do it. We can't hold you to it. Yeah. I understand that. Mr. McGill, you had what something about to add. When you, on the 300 foot setback, couldn't you, uh, I was looking at this map that Matt, uh, Matthew printed out, and couldn't you say something along the lines of, you know, your frontage of the original property, um, uh, you know, the depth of the you know original property, wherever it's from, I don't know how you could word it, but, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but it, you can't go back anywhere where you don't uh, buy property that deep where you can you're not going to end up with frontage on another road a residential road so it wouldn't behoove you to like me going back and buying mr healy's property and into laurel i'd end up with frontage on laurel right and but right now it property. doesn't matter because you'd still have frontage in center street yeah but that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying the original property is frontage in center street in center protection so if you could word it somewhere where the frontage of the original property and the depth of that property then you can't really go back anywhere where you wouldn't hit another development you know, yeah, i think the language we're talking about wouldn't affect you but by the way because you've already acquired that property right no i haven't got in front of you but it still wouldn't if i combined it it's still not deeper i'm not making my property any deeper so the, the that would be that wouldn't I'm, i even if i add that parcel when i when I that twenty thousand square feet. Oh, you feet. haven't added it. Yet. No, and okay. that wouldn't be so. That wouldn't go. That, but that, that wouldn't deep. make my parcel any deeper. I'm not making it go any back any farther. Than the back line of the lot you have. Yeah, 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 yeah. It would be. It follows that line straight across. So you say something to the effect of no deeper than the original parcel that existed on the date of X Y Z. Or on. So you well, go sideways, but you can't go any deeper. That's what it feels like. We're we're sort of just trying to zone around a specific issue mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to right. come up with right. a rule for the zone. Right. Um, which is where the effective date would say, okay, get your ducks in a row now, and then we're going to lock it in to what's good for the zone. Maybe make some amount of sense. But why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you try to work that zoning around? The residents, the it's few residents that, that, that have property and interest with inside that district. Why wouldn't you do that? Well, that, that it, it, would stay, it would stay with the now existing well, I think, ownership. I think that's what we're doing. I, I think that's a little bit of what we're adjusting. It's just a question of whether we're going to go as far as, as individuals might want us to. 
because keep in mind that as the planning board, we're looking at the interest of the, of the homeowners in the district, but we're also looking at the interest of the town, right? Um, there's a balance here where we're trying to come up with a rule that, that, um, that helps the town um, build its village center, which has always been expected to be kind of the biz a little business village center of the town. Um, even as Mr. DeMarzo said tonight, going back to the 1970s, you know, there's a question as to how deep it was meant to be, but it was always some sort of business component to this area of town. So that's not like something that's being introduced. The mixed use was actually something added in, not the um, business isn't really something that's new. It's not like we're suddenly saying we're going to take a residential area of town and make it business. We're basically going back to what it was before. It was right. a business district where there was an experiment to add some mixed use to see if that would help spur the business development. So that by law really was an happen. experiment? Yes. Okay. Failed. A failed experiment. How would it affect the town's future for like that, that the, let me see, they have the obviously own the biggest piece of parcel there. If the town <laughs> or something felt the need for elderly housing or something along those lines that, uh, you know, on the map it says the Pilgrim Area Collaborative. Um, the future use of that parcel. Well, that's well, town owned. Yeah, yeah. Comes so that's what I'm saying. How would it affect? Well, that's in the historic district, too. Yeah, it's not in the center protection district. It's actually outside the center protection district. So but also, uses allowed no. includes it's municipal, in charitable, oh, yeah. philanthropic, educational, religious, or governmental uses are separate and apart from whether it's commercial or mixed use. So if it's if it falls in that category, arguably, it um, it, it doesn't matter what the bylaw says. It's excuse, right? Hi, <laughs> okay. uh, Susan Fitzgibbon, Senator Holly Hill Lane. As a resident of the center, and being on the original committee that uh, came up with these bylaws and whatnot, I would like to propose that it be 400 feet, not 300 feet, 400 feet. Uh, you know, set back. Here, here, 400 feet. And, and what would be the reason for 400 feet versus 300 feet? Well, I don't think 300 feet. is enough. So it okay. was all on my lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't. It's 500 feet. It's my lot. Oh, no, no, no. He didn't coerce me. No. I just think the 300 isn't enough in the center. You want to get businesses in there at some point, don't you? Down the line? One of, the, feet isn't do it. one of the issues that a lot of sites lack is parking. Yep. And you really do need more depth. You need a little bigger parcel than 150 feet and 40,000 square feet to get your sidelines, your parking, uh, you know, 20, 18, 20 feet here, 18, 20 feet of parking on the side, some buffers, turn around in the middle, it's jammed. And a lot of places are underparked. And we do need more parking on the parcels that are being provided by the bylaw. I always thought the bylaw was weak as to the amount of parking required. See, I, I guess I'm leaning towards the, the depth of the That's wrong. As of a certain date, the, the depth of the lot as of, you know, July 1st or something. I think these are some things we can continue to work on. The question tonight is whether we're going to eventually make a motion to bring this to town meeting floor. Well, the and in that interim period, as you brought up before, to try to work out some solutions to the parties in here. And see if we can get something by the time we get to town meeting that we will offer up as a solution. Well, couldn't we make a modification tonight, though, that would then alter what goes into the town warrant? I guess I, I would prefer not having to make a, an amendment on town meeting or if we have a sense of what we want. I was going to suggest that we're talking about existing are we, uh, depth. Are we running, are we uh, pushing the issue then just because we think we get something that is 400 feet? But we're not quite sure if some folks would agree to 400 feet. And then we can say 500 feet. But why not leave it? Why, I why think not leave it at the maximum depth? depth? There's so few lots involved. I mean, you're spending so much time on this, and how many lots are involved? Five. 
Huh? Well, Actually, I'm thinking the, the question is how many lots are involved today versus how many lots are involved well, no, when we start to aggregate properties. If you do, if you say you less less lots. the maximum <laughs> <laughs> of an existing <laughs> lot as of today. Well, that's what I'm saying. And not, you don't have to worry about it then, that people putting lots together to get, to go so yeah. far. Well, right, that's what I was suggesting is that we, t but if you are we saying the same thing that to, we say but you're, the you're existing putting a date depth on it. as of... You're, you're saying... Let's put a date on it. Right, because we don't want people to start adding to it. But you're going to eliminate that right there. You're going to say the existing lot as of now. Right. So depth nobody can add to depth. it. Depth. Depth, 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 depth of the depth. As of you can't go date. back for it. As, as of now. today. So I can't go as and as buy, as of, as of well, I can't anyway, school. cemetery. But people can't right. buy a bunch of lots to get so deep. But where can they on this? Well, there's not, there's it's not it's many that they can. Only only one, wide. You just yeah. go with the existing yeah. lots. Uh, and wide should be good if you want to promote business. Wide better than narrow. If you go wide, you can achieve what you're trying to achieve. Wide is better than narrow because now you can have the ability to get into there safely. I would think we would discuss vehicles, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're going to come up with a solution right now, and I don't feel like just going, oh, yeah, that that makes more sense than something else. Well, what's what you want to work with the group that's here and say, yeah, you know, we have time. Town meeting is May 9th try to come to... Yeah, but we have to get it on the warrant. We'd rather have it on the warrant than we would want it. Is the warrant closed? Yeah. The warrant will be closed. If, by the way, if we only made it on the floor, we can't simply change it here because we didn't advertise it that way. We said delete. Yep. So the only way to really get this done properly is, in fact, to bring an amendment to it at town meeting floor because then it's before the legislative body to vote it with the okay. amendment. That makes sense. So basically, we're going. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about going back to your original. So, so the basically argument been, being made right now is whatever that whatever the as was advertised tonight is what should be voted on, and whether we move that to town meeting floor, and if we want to uh, modify accommodate any change, then move that right. forward uh, and That'll see how it goes to town meeting floor. So let me just give you my understanding of what you just said that we would take a vote on the amendments as drafted, as published and advertised for these public meetings. With the assumption, with the stated assumption publicly, that between the timing of this vote and town meeting, we would take into account these comments and develop a written proposal to bring to town meeting floor to amend it to accommodate some of these issues. Does any, everyone understand what, what, what we're talking about doing here? Mm -hmm. um, so that to the extent we're either saying 400 feet or the exip, existing depth as of today, <coughs> I think that would accommodate a lot of what we're hearing um, I, the, on the depth issue. On the mixed use issue, um, we'd still have to have a discussion between now and town meeting about whether we're going to delay the effective date right. of the mixed use um, uh, elimination of the mixed use from the of any further mixed use development in the that would be part of your process would be part of our process between now and town meeting correct okay. don't feel we still have to conduct a public hearing regarding 220 center street so a yes. lot of this discussion is just going to spill over into the next public hearing. That's all there is to it. We're all around it. We're talking all around the issue. We're well, just not so next Monday night, everyone understands. Spotlight on yours. Monday the 27th. Is it Monday the 27th or next week? It's next week, the 13th. I think, yeah, oh, it's 13th? Yeah. 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 So next week on March 13th, we have a public hearing on a site plan for 220 Center Street, which is one of the sites in the Center Protection District that um, we would be looking at a special permit having to do with um, a mixed-use uh, multifamily and, and business development on that site. Um, so if anybody is interested in these issues, you may also want to participate in that site plan review next week. Um, so do we have a motion with respect to the bylaw amendment with respect to the depth from the public way? So moved. I, 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 you want to make the motion? Uh, unless you do. No, so, sure, go ahead. 
No. I, mean, I don't know what form you want it in, I guess is what I'm saying in the motion. You want me to simply state that the motion be moved, uh, that the, I move that the planning board approve uh, placing the article, which was the affected area on it. I want to make sure we have it correct. Um, I move that the, uh, the planning board approve <coughs> to uh, move to town meeting four, uh, revise section 310 by replacing the uh, language, uh, or I should say removing the language, whichever is greater, from in parallel to following ways being the addition. So that we revise section th uh, 310. Uh, by replacing it as said, and that uh, that the planning board move to approve that to go to town meeting for that article. That's second. That amendment. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Would it, Elder? Oh. Guess what? Will that, how do we, will you also state that you will review and, and we're under the assumption that you're going to propose amendments at that four meeting? Yes, but I don't think that would be appropriate as part of the motion um, because this motion has to be a clean way to get it onto the warrant. And then at town meeting floor, obviously if we don't um, do what we said we were going to do tonight and consider and either explain or provide amendments at town meeting floor, then I assume some people will get up and oppose the um, bylaw change at town meeting. Um, but I, I don't think we would build it into the motion right now. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion to have a second. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Um, Wendell seconded. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So it'll be on the on the warrant. It'll be a town meeting. Um, it'll be another discussion on Monday. There'll be another discussion next Monday as we talk about the specific site plan at 2:20. But now we need another motion on the. Um, Move that the planning board approve uh, that the amendments, proposed amendments to the town town zone by zoning bylaw, uh, as advertised, to be deletion of section 47D2, deletion of section 47D3, deletion of section 47D4. C, uh, deletion of section 471, and to revise section 47E2 as advertised, and to delete section 47E3 as printed in the public hearing notice. And to move that to the town, the board approve, moving that onto the town meeting for discussion there. Second. Any discussion? I would again put into the record that the assumption of this vote tonight among the planning board members is that we will be looking at this between now and town meeting to discuss whether we would um, uh, have an amendment ready to put before the town meeting um, to uh, address some of the concerns that have been brought up in these um, public hearings. Um, I think that we also have to make a recommendation in general. In other words, we voted to put this onto the warrant, but usually there's a section left on the warrant that says planning board recommendation. Recommendation. <coughs> so I would suggest in that area that we move to simply state that we approve uh, recommendation at this time for the item. We still need to finish that vote. I think we have an objection. So we have okay, let's let's, let's vote first. first. Yeah. So we have a motion on the floor. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So now to the next point, there's a recommendation. Does the board want to make recommendation as to the adoption of the bylaws, for instance? Um, and uh, it's going to have to happen probably by at least next week. Let's put that way. I guess my question is, could do you, in your view, do you believe that we could say that we would recommend adoption of the bylaw uh, with any? Uh, modifications that the planning board may propose on town meeting floor. Sure. I think we're contemplating some modifications, so I don't have any problem with that language. But that we have to also, uh, again, there's 
the board, what gets it there is the board's approval of what's being essentially submitted. Right. That's what makes it get to town meeting floor. If we vote not to recommend it, it dies here. Right, right. So I would be comfortable voting to recommend it with that caveat. Yeah, that's subject to appeal. Or, or a, subject a amendment to uh, town meeting floor. Subject to it, such amendments as may be proposed by the plant, planning I'm board at right, town meeting floor. floor. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that I move for that. Okay. Second. Second. So it's allowing that to be a recommendation, but we're we're opening up the possibility, Matthew, of amendment Article. on town meeting floor, if proposed by the planning board. That means if somebody else comes out with an amendment, we may have to oppose the other thing on town meeting floor. But if we make the recommendation, we would obviously we would not be opposing ourselves. What's the hurry here? It seems like you guys are just trying to push this thing right through. I, that's what it feels like sitting oh, we've been here. Looking. I'm sorry, but let's make this action before we take on okay. another yeah. question. Fair enough. All right, so we have a motion. Um, do we? Did you get that motion? Yeah, why didn't you clarify it again? Do you, want, do you want to say what you have written? I've got nothing. So. Oh, okay. we got on tape. Right? So we, but we want to move that stuff. we will make a positive recommendation or determination for the two articles. But, or you subject add language to, subject to, subject to uh, um, amendment. Amendments town, amendment proposed, proposed by the planning meeting. board on town meeting floor. Um, so, in in terms of um, so any discussion, and I hear that um, Mr. Ingram was raising the issue of whether we're pushing this through. I guess my feeling is that it has been properly noticed and it has been, you know, we have given it two nights of public hearing. We will be discussing these things again between now and town meeting, specifically next week in the context of a specific site plan, which should be somewhat removed from the bylaw because the bylaw isn't addressing that specific site. But um, these issues overlap with some of the site plan um, considerations. Um, the bylaw isn't addressing what particular site, I'm sorry. 220 Center Street has a site plan before the planning board. Right. Um, that's one that's already been designed mm -hmm. and through the ZBA and will be back before the planning board. So this, it, some of the same issues will come up in that context. Um, it will flesh out maybe some of what people are hearing and concerned about, but I don't want to mix the two because they really are two separate issues. One is a specific property owner made a specific proposal, um, and the other is a bylaw that has more general application. We will be taking into account the um, concerns expressed here tonight, but I, I don't think the planning board thinks this is something that necessarily needs another year of time to work through. I, I don't know that we're going to add a lot to that conversation. Though. Because it was a failed experiment? I mean, with all due respect, you put notice on this. I walked into the first meeting. You canceled it. You postponed it. After your first notice. You postponed the first hearing on this. Big paper right there on that easel. Sorry for the inconvenience, but we can't meet. Okay? So now we get in here, and in two Monday nights, we all of a sudden you you want to you know push this through on something that's been on the books since 1977, and you're now you're calling it a failed this, experiment. This, no, no, this, this has not been on the books. Since, no, this has not been on the books since 1977. The issue is just the depth. The depth. Just the depth, the depth issue has been on the books since 1977. The mixed use piece of this. Yeah. Of this, the second. I just want to clarify actually. for the record. 79, it was. Okay. The, the mixed use has not been on as long. About 2006, I guess, five, somewhere around there, maybe four or five. So it, I, it had to be before 2005 because that was when the Sealand site plan was done. So the, um, so the mixed use not piece long. of this bylaw has not been on. Okay, long. well, be that as it may, it's been around for a while and through one of the worst recessions our economy's ever experienced. And I think that the board needs to give that some very realistic consideration. 
that's why the commercial couldn't thrive in the downtown. I mean, people, eh, you all have retirement funds, how'd they do in that dip? I mean, the whole economy dipped like that. The whole Center Plaza was built in that yeah. time frame. And they could live in. The, the Center Plaza was built in that time frame, and they're, it and can, they're, it, and they're fully, it, and they're fully uh, full, aren't they? they oh, absolutely. No, no, absolutely. But, I mean, what do you... We've got 7-Eleven and um, who else do we have here? Cumberland Farms. Do we need a Tedeschi's can we, also? Can we talk? Okay, can we do the I, I think that um, we're past the time that we've allowed. So we have the vote with respect to putting this on town meeting, making a recommendation to town meeting. Um, so we hear you, Mr. Ingram, but I don't know that... That's fine. I mean, you're going to do what you want to do. It's fine. I just want to say what I want to say. Are you sure that we have to do that stuff? No. So we have a motion, a second. Can we vote on the recommendation as stated by Brian? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Second. I did. And the second. Um, All right. So we need a motion to close both public hearings. Yeah, I guess they were both advertised. They were both no paper. So, Brian, you that motion? Oh, I'm, I'm proposing public hearing uh, concerning the advertised change in amendment to bylaw, the zone of bylaw uh, regarding death in the way and lot size. So, I'll close that section of the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, as advertised, deletion of mixed use within the Senate Protection District. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so we've closed those public hearings. And we'll now move on to the rest of our business for the night. We now have uh, 4 May for 538 Washington Street. Yeah, yeah. What's your name? Next week. Seven. Um, I'm not sure. Let me bother. Yeah, so. Seven. So it's posted on my phone. Okay. Do you have an existing one? I have an existing one. Ninety nine Center Street. That's the one that's four hundred feet. Yeah, I, don't know, I, I don't know exactly how far it's over three. So it's. But it goes back. Well. And it always has gone back. It always has gone back that far. But it comes out well. If I put that other piece on there, it comes out to a point on Holly Lake. And you are Tom Morris. So on our plot plan. Back in 97, it said 300 feet. There was a line. There's always been 300 feet. Yeah. I always assumed it was 300 feet. That's what's on the two eyes. Right. 300 feet. So it's like, why? I don't know. You want to get in touch with us? So how did this thing change? Addison assistance. Come in to make sure. Whose idea was that? Always hard to write. We can just spill it right to the minutes, right? Explain it. Uh, better to write right, to the wrong side. We're here on 538 Washington Street. Yeah, they're here. They're right here. They're right here. I was trying to move right along there, Brian. Good evening. I'm Bob Boss, the applicant. This is Tom Morris from Outback Engineering. I've got the also the. Yeah. Oh, do you have individual copies for us? Uh, no, it's just uh, yeah, it's an A form. Um, I've got two copies, a hard copy, and I assume he's got the same thing. Sure, you guys want to get on? Show us the Washington. Currently, he owns all 
all the way. I think Carly owns all of this. Is that right? Yeah, come next year. Yes. Come to us. Come to us. So it's lots one through three in this parcel here are all one parcel currently. And it actually, I can show you an old plan of it. So is what what's going to be transferred? This parcel A or this? Yeah, so this is how it is currently. It's one big pot. Okay. Yeah. And you're gonna make it three lots out of it. Yeah. And Which it actually was almost and then this would be it was three lots three. back in nineteen sixty six. Okay. It's almost we're making it almost the same thing. We're just cutting off the next uh, uh, we make them conforming lots, yeah, we're gonna take put yeah. buildings yeah. on here. Right? Oh, and then a lot of the corners are gonna stay the same. So it doesn't affect this guy in any way. Are these um up ones? Yeah, there's no wetlands on the project yeah. at all. That makes life so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is natural heritage, and we've already filed um, Lisa. Yeah. Right, but that'll be, it, theoretically, it's, they're buildable. Yeah. If you get the approvals that you need from other boards. Yeah, they've already been parked. Okay. Right, but theoretically. Okay, so what you're seeking tonight is that lot one, two, or three. Combined into one lot. No, no we're no, separating. No, separate. I'm sorry, you're taking it out of the big lot, making it into two double lots. Yes. yes. Obviously, it's an anti. So, uh, I have no problem with this. Does anybody have a problem with this? No, I think it meets our, our, our requirements for a four main lot. Right. It doesn't make anybody else non conforming. Everybody else is fine. And this is marked as a not a buildable lot for conveyance purposes. Yeah, and that's not part of this transfer. So you could convey yeah. parcel can A to it. one of these people yeah. or one of these people because right. you can't right. convey right. it as a buildable right. lot. Right. So, so it will be a separate lot. It just. I make posts as well. Oh, so you're planning on keeping these two together? Well, um, potentially this neighbor might want to buy it or potentially whoever is still that house. Okay. All right. Good. I make a motion that the town, uh, that the uh, board's clerk, uh, have the authority to sign these uh, formula lots. Yeah, you said. Don't you need to sign it? Yeah, the bylaw. So I, I second that motion. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have problems. Yeah, so yeah, no one opposed. Unanimous. Planning on building soon. This is when we buy it. That's going to be real good for us. Many of us put it on the market. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll put on the yeah, right. Right. Not one of the lots in the market, right? Yeah. 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 No one in the I got four people so 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 now, should Tom also sign our two? Yeah. I think one of these is going to go to the town of and we're going to keep one. So I assume, if I recall correctly, you should sign these as well. And I think that one is your copy, right? That her copy, right? Yep. Okay. So these two are our copies. That was the easiest format we've had in a long time. It's a real format. <laughs> Extent of I need to finish Thank you very much again. That's what I'm told. I've never actually researched that issue. And eventually, eventually, the minutes of the will be on the web eventually, and it'll state that the board voted to endorse your form. Thank you.
Yeah. I was thinking about that as, as we were talking about this. Yeah, I know we solved their problem. Right, but just excluded. Right, which is an exclusion. Right, have them up. So you need my side. Right, that's exactly what I was thinking. Everything we did was so easy. I don't want to be able to see. I already heard the problem. Yeah. Just to look at Samson Lumber, and that next to him goes way back. Yeah. And that depth is 400 feet. And the guy on the CD comes to those two lines. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye now. Have a good night. And so the way for us to go around in the future is with the center. I ball the five and I'm going to say last month. Here it's good. So we, uh, so Tom, you, you signed, you signed the Marlock. Yeah, we've done. Um, okay, so we got a few more. We have a couple of routine administrative matters. Yeah, we've actually got a few interested. Okay. Uh, can, can we, do we have everyone here that we can um, approve the planning board minutes of Monday, February 27, 2017? Tom, myself, Brian. No, we don't have enough. Okay. I wasn't here. On January 23rd, we have Andy, Paul, Tom, and Brian. You guys could do Monday, January 23rd. All right, I make a motion that we accept the minutes of Monday, January 23rd as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain because I wasn't there. Okay. So for the minutes of the 27th, um, it'll save paper if you guys give that back to me. I mean, it doesn't matter, but now we won't have to print it up again for your next packet. Oh, if we give it back to you, yeah. so you just give it back yeah. to us again? Exactly. I know it sounds kind of silly, but recycling. That way, yeah. The 23rd. Wait, 23rd. So February 27th is exactly. what we're giving back to you. Okay, unless you have a great desire to uh, read it. Here it is. Great. Thanks. Okay, Matt. You, what else do you have for us tonight? I see that there... Um, I apologize that I did not go to the site walk on Sunday. I was not this weekend, and in my fog, I forgot about it. It's a total, total one. I remembered all about it, too. Matthew and I were there. I'm going to have to go by there this week and just take a look. When are they coming in? Next week, next session? 27th. I think March 27th. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So are we meeting now. every week this month? Feels yeah. like it. We're busy. I think we're not. Busy. I think, I think we're not meeting March 20th. Okay. But, um, yeah, I think, okay. So next week, then, not the 20th and then the 27th. Uh, okay, so for, um, I think I already mentioned, for the, um, the road acceptance public here for the selectmen, that'll be March 20th. Just sort of FYI, I, I don't think any, any of us need to be there. Um, they've already got our, our support. It's just where the selectmen go on whether to. That's a question of where. Exactly. The two when are they doing it? March 20th? Yeah. And I think probably Owen Kelly is going to be there just to, to you know, obviously, to make sure. and maybe some of the residents will be there. Just to if somebody could be there from our board, it would probably be helpful in case they question. Right. And, and that we can make clear that we're moving, that it go on to the board because we. I can. I mean, I can ask could, Sabrina if she wants me to be there. I think it's. I, mean, I think it's probably not necessary. She's got. She's got the letter for me. But I can ask. I can ask Sabrina if, if she wants like a okay. me or a planning board person. Um, I see. There's a new walk scheduled for the water for the Water Street project in 40B for March 8th. At 10 a.m., which is Wednesday at 10 a.m., I cannot be there. But there's another walk. Is it? Yeah, it's, it's this Wednesday, March 8th at I think 10 a.m. March 8th at 10 a.m., there's a walk at the 40B project in Water Street, which I cannot make. I have two complex. So if anybody can make it. At 10 a.m. I think I'm going to try to go to that one. It seems like it would make sense. Who, who's, who set it up there? This, I guess, I think it's the the state, I think, that has set this one up. And it's, I guess, because the first sidewalk they did, for whatever reason, wasn't sort of a success or didn't get enough people. Um, Too many people got their feet wet. Yeah, I mean, yeah, even wetter, I guess. 
So the, the other thing you put in our files was 300 Center Street. Are you looking for us to take action on this tonight? Um, on the draft, I think, on the I letter think, on 300 Center Street, or are you I, just advising us that you're going to send this in? I think it's ready to be signed. I've prepared it. Um, and so that's, I mean, I wrote draft of that just the confusion, but that is my final version, um, subject to any, you know, changes you guys asked for. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to sign it to that or spend some time looking at that. I think what that is, is exactly the same as what I've prepared, ready to be signed, uh, yeah, the, except the fact that I wrote draft and all this kind of stuff. The only issues we, the only conditions we had on our approval was the payment of the, of the money, which has yeah, been done, yeah. the closing off the of that um, illegal entrance on Hubbard yeah. Street, which has happened. Yeah. And we had no other outstanding conditions, so there's no reason why we shouldn't um, sign this and certify that we've given site plan approval, right? Yeah, I mean, that was my sense from last week. He fixed the, fixed the drainage. Is that ready? He fixed the drainage. Um, that I can't really say. I mean, if there's still there's still work that he's he wants. I mean, he wants to continue to finish up his work, and Peter Palmieri is gonna going to do another inspection well, probably. Wasn't so it's still that one of the, wasn't that one of the conditions? Yeah, it was. And that was at the front of the place, right? During the construction of the completion of the project stormwater basin, the site contractor should notify the planning board's consulting engineer and their base. You were heard to observe the water table at the bottom of the basin. Has that been done? As I understood it, um, James like Costello told me that's been done. If I understood it correctly, yeah, but, yeah, but it'll be up. It'll be up to Peter. I think. The to, yeah. The problem is, is judge. that we can. You know, they can tell us a lot of things. Yeah. The question is, you got to verify that that's been done and that it's, it complies. Well, also in this letter, I think where it says. At its meeting, the planning board voted to grant the petitioner's site plan approval with conditions to be written at a later date. Should we say um, well, we wrote the conditions. that we wrote the conditions? So this um, case description that's going, that's being signed, should include the conditions, right? Shouldn't well, the, the conditions con be here? The conditions. I mean, the conditions are on the following pages. Normally, what I mean, I originally started well, doing these based we're on we're what I'd seen from the way Maryland had done them, where they're, that page, which I think is the proceedings, and then the, what's on the following pages is the decision which contains the conditions. Okay. But a lot of the stuff is sort of what I'm trying so to figure can we out. Get, so can, can you verify for us that some of these things, uh, specifically for the Peters, done the, uh, the engineering review? Uh, of the of the drainage. So our site plan approval will still have these conditions. Yeah, in and we and we and we've got the as built thing. Yeah, we well, it's not the work is not finished yet. So we what we have is still we file our site plan. The plan. The we've are still being we've still got the drawing. We don't usually do that. What is the purpose of? Well, the, dif this now. the difference of this one was is that by us granting, given the conditions, they can use the deck, correct? It relieves, it relieves them of the restriction on that deck. So they need an as built plan before an occupancy permit may be issued. I think they would still. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, we can't, they, I don't yeah, think they, they have an, I think the occupancy permit they have, I believe, is, is only for the interior. Correct. They don't allow them to use the. the the construction of the deck that was done without permits. I think that's correct. And in fact, he was telling me about how, yeah, he doesn't, he so, like when, yeah, he doesn't let anybody on the deck. No, so he's not so allowed to. Yeah. Well, I, well, can't we just get, come to some sort of uh, agreement here that we, we're not sure all of these conditions have been met? Yeah, I think they have to be. I mean, mm -hmm. once, once you sign this, it's over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, even though he's going to, Anyone can tell you they're going to finish whatever, but not necessarily. There's no follow-up. So Matthew, after can that. you find out? And then we have a meeting next week. But I think he can't. He can't. He can't continue with. I don't think he can continue. I mean, maybe I'm confused. I don't think he can continue with construction until we, you guys. I mean, like, I mean, normally with a site plan, at least in theory, it's submitted. The, what, what the conditions are signed. Well, what construction is he have to do? He, he didn't have any construction. He's still doing the fire pit 
uh, and I think a little other stuff well, from photography like from Randy. He certainly his planning is not established. Yeah, so some of the stuff would be the landscape. Uh, uh, the I mean, the reason, I mean, originally, the reason he got in touch with me, and probably part of the reason why he paid the balance, was because he wants to, to finish the construction, uh, and he didn't want to, I think he didn't want to be in violation, so he didn't want to well, get back to work on it until he was sure we were okay. You're saying in violation of what? Yeah. Let's just find out. It seems to me that the only issue we have here is the stormwater basins. Um, and the observation of the water table, and has that, that been done? And we, did we have a final uh, run through by Peter? You, you also need a release from conservation. Yeah, we, there's a few things there that would be open here. No, he, yeah, that shall comply with the order conditions issued by the Conservation Commission, which were approved on October 24, 2016. Well, he's just, he's just got, a, got a statement, didn't he? Everything he's been doing. Right. We just want to make sure that the things that we stopped him for uh, have been addressed. Because we're signing something that he, the, the, the deck was already built, the fencing was already installed. The, you know, did he... So is he allowed to, is he allowed to continue work on this without sure. us, without you guys? Yeah, okay. yeah. But, but he... What? I think so you guys will sign up. I think he wants a release to be able to use the deck. Right. And until until we sign off on these ten items, mm -hmm. he's prohibited from using it. And I think we need Peter to go out and look at it, and we need a, a letter from the conservation saying that they're, they're happy with it. I don't know if he's saying, I can't begin the construction without you guys signing off on the plan, which is actually, you know, put the cock before the horse or whatever you want to call that. I think Tom's on to it. With my recollection was he had to go up and complete these things prior to us being able to say, okay, you can go occupy that deck now and go out and do whatever they were intended to do. So, um, yeah, I think that we can't really sign off on this yet. We have to... He, is up, he has the full authority, as long as he's pulled a filter permit, to go out and make the improvements to the deck. And upon completion of that deck, he can... Actually, we told him to us and we'll sign off. He came to us about the shed, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and we didn't say, no, you can't do that because we haven't signed off on this. Yeah. You can't begin. Yeah. No. We said, fine. What's it for? <laughs> All right. What else do we have? I mean, I guess this is the, this whole period of sentence being is sort of an unusual listen, situation started, because listen, the construction started, began before the session. They started was, out wrong. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And you then they put it on the on the backs of everybody else to make it right. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, there's for. For 56 Pembroke Woods Drive, the warehouse expansion that um, you guys did set for approval back in November, uh, there's just a field change there um, that Peter went out and reviewed. And it looks like from Peter's email, he said basically this is, this is sort of an acceptable field change. Um, I don't know if you, you folks, I know, I think in the past sometimes you guys would vote like to accept a field change, or I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. If, on, or just to note it, anyway, I'm notifying you. I don't know if you want to vote to that. say it's acceptable. It should, be, like to say. <laughs> it should be voted on by this committee, but it's considered a minor modification. Exactly. So it doesn't, plan. it doesn't necessitily have to go to the second review again. Correct. Correct. So, so all it does, if we determine this is a minor modification, all we have to do is sign off on it and say it's fine. Okay. So we have to have a, as long as it's discussed in the board, the board grants approval, right, yeah. not the engineer grants approval. So we yeah. have before yeah. us the the proposed modifications to the site plan at um, 56 Pembroke Woods Drive. Do we have a motion to accept the modifications as a minor modification? I didn't read that. But what, is, what is the modification? <coughs> <coughs> 
someone else read it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in there, Major? I, I didn't see it in my package. Right? Is there anything in there? Major? It does uh, agree, but they want to film the bridge and catch base in 6 7, or in 5, and break the whole fire and rob it. Do I have Peter come in for the next meeting or whenever yeah, we can well, schedule it? Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Why, why are these abandoned? I'm not sure. So why yeah. don't we bring them in if we're not sure we can get up our questions? Well, we don't want anything to affect the drainage here in an adverse way. Especially with those box turtles all out there. <laughs> yeah. So why is Peter recommending that the changes be handled as a field change and the contractor be permitted to proceed? Oh, he has... He has so Peter, in his email, says, we are in agreement that these proposed modifications will have no, no impact okay. on the approved design in the existing drainage system. Consequently, we recommend that these changes be handled as a field change and recommend that the contractor be permitted to proceed. Well, and will they end up on the as-built? I can see what he's got, what he's doing. They re reviewed the approved site plan and the drainage calculations for the modifications. These, these are new systems. He wants to fill in yes. uh, catch base in uh, Green Bay Hope 5, catch base in 7, and, and explain this to the uh, catch base in 6, and plug up another one somewhere because they're not being used anymore. And he needs to, to grade things to build that road the way it's on the plan. I don't think, as Brian said, Peter should come out. But it looks like it's a, it's a minor yeah. modification, right. it's a field change. Right. Right. You should discuss all this. Yeah. But we have a meeting next week, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Is it over stuff right now with other things? Uh, no, not at all, actually. It's getting in on. And I think, I mean, I think Peter is coming in next week anyway. I believe he's, I mean, he's done the review for 220. And in fact, I have, uh, it's not in your packet, but if you guys want, I have Peter's comments on 220. So, uh, so Peter's coming in next week them. anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, we'll, we'll, just so we'll put this off. Week and just... So you'll put this on the agenda for next week, Matthew? Um, yeah, sure. Well, even, even if not on the agenda, at least. I want to know. I want to know how they're proceeding with now that you know, fucked over. Uh, yeah. um, Should that be something that could be just under routine, routine emergency? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 And considering all these mixed uses, you know. <coughs> okay, somebody's written stuff. It seems like a bad Chucky movie for me. Okay, so then um, we know it was bad when they went around this. So, so, what else do we have? so you know about this, the 40B sidewalk. Um, there's also this. Probably doesn't matter. There's a. Just so you know, there's another solar kickoff meeting on Wednesday. Uh, yeah. This Wednesday, I think at noon, I believe it is. Do we get money? Through. So we're not getting money okay. until. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the question about the money. So oh, we're yeah. not getting the money until. So my understanding is that we're not going to get the money until they finish construction, but before they get approval to start yeah. operations. Yeah. Wow. Um, I think. I think the town council said after operations. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Why do they get the same? Right. It's a mystery to me because it's in the condition of a first off, it has to be. It's not that town council's interpretation is, is bizarre. But it's a condition. It's a site. But unfortunately, that's what the town council said. I don't see it as a big problem, Mr. Bad. Me neither. I mean, whether we get the money tomorrow or we get the money. And things up and running. Oh. How, are you, how are you going to call them in here? Who? The people who are giving us the money. Well, they're going to be operating. Well, I mean, we, that, we do in. have an agreement. No, it's a different, different group that's going to be operating. Well, yeah. if you want to spend money on town council to go sue them for the money, I guess we'll have to. But, um, I mean, we do have here, it's in the conditions you're going to provide us 25000 Apparently, the language around that is what prompted yeah, town council to have to look um, at and say, well, it says when it's in operation. That's how we conditioned it. I when you say right, operation, I don't think I mean, we conditioned it as an operation. In my opinion, that's not how we conditioned it. No, but we that's how town council conditioned it prior to the beginning. We just put it as a site plan condition without a date. Anyhow, 
Anyway, since uh, 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 well, let me just ask a question. Can I ask a question? So since the um, the superstructure's kind of been put up, right? And we can see the sight lines. Mm -hmm. And I know we told the abutters that we wanted to see what it would look like when it went up. We wanted to see it. Now's a great time to look at it because the vegetation's where, you know. I go by it all the time and I'm like, we need some buffer. That's right, <laughs> right. I, I do the same thing. So I looked at it and I've heard some, well, it won't, but. You know, when people are talking about it. Well, that's why you can't come up with a design until it's up. Now you look at it. Right. right. And so, like, we need buffer. Yeah, and people well, are talking yeah. about it. They, they'd like to see a buffer. So. Apparently on social media, somebody said that it's, it's that those are the foundations for a parking garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the high school. One, the one thing uh, it would be premature, we don't know really where the solar panel Facing. It's going to be and what each other works early on. And I don't know, you know, we're going to just follow it. This is, yeah, don't worry about it, folks. Brian, okay? Brian, this, not, this, this is not going to change. This is going to be done by May. Yeah. 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 Oh, I yeah, so this, is the, this is the cookie oh, cutout. Okay, we, get, we get the money in June. I just want to make sure they get it before they go out of town. Oh, they're under condition. There's no question that they owe the money. Council is not arguing. Uh, you guys don't really have a right to get to this. These funds, they're not arguing that at all. It's when you get it. That's, the well, that's true, but we may need to be start looking at, at getting a design. Well, that's what I'm saying. Now a good time to look at it. You get costs. Even if we had the money tomorrow, you'd be doing all those things, and it's still, you know, you have. We're talking about plantings. They got to mature. It's going to take time, years, if not well, that's necessary. Listen, by the time they mature, <laughs> they can do it. Really that, yeah. that stuff's going to be ripped out of there because it's going to be off somewhere. Yeah, maybe. By the time this stuff gets matured. Yeah. Right. But it's only a 25, eight, at the max, 25 well, years. Let me ask another thing. Well, again, you know, if you drive by the site, right. you can see where the counter fence line oh. is. You can see where it's at in the past. The topography well, lends, itself, it goes up. lends itself well to yeah. being able to shutter this thing. You know, you don't have to have 30 feet of things. You need about 10 or 15. And I bet if you went across the line, what? you'd find that 15 foot bushes at maturity, you're probably going to knock out 90% of those holes without panel on the site. Yeah. Or at least you'll have something pretty job. to break up the site. It's not a big job. No. It's just properly putting stuff into place. We got landscape architects right now. Okay. So why do we have this mending wall thing in front of us? I, uh, I'll, I'll is this, are we second. still holding money here? Yeah, let me get to that in a second. Uh, so oh, yeah. I put the thing in your packet about that conference on March, the, the yeah, we sure. March 18th if you're interested. Um, is there anything there that you were hoping to go to? Uh, I thought about it. I think I probably won't go to that one. Okay. Uh, but at some point in the future I should go to some of those those training sessions or, or some of the um, I think probably. Uh, I would ask. I would ask the attorney about this. What? About that money. Well, I don't because understand we what took, the, I don't know what the, this is. We took the property. Yeah. The two back taxes. <coughs> we took the house out in front. Oh yeah. Hold on. Hold on, hold on a sec. Yeah, I get that sec. So for the uh, uh, for the marijuana prohibition, I guess I'd just say we should probably. I mean, I'll know better soon, but. We should probably tentatively plan on having a public hearing on April 3rd, uh, which I know is the first Monday of April, but keep in mind, we, I'll, be, I'll be traveling April 10th and 14th. Why don't we compel that a public hearing on that? I believe the planning board has to have a public hearing within 65 days after it's proposed because it's a, it's a zoning bylaw amendment proposal. Because it's a zoning bylaw change. It oh, because it's a. You're doing the same the thing we're doing. The chief is submitting with your. So if the selectmen today vote to, to ban everything for that, we don't. But I, I didn't we don't realize it was a zoning bylaw change. Which is, is kind of strange. Making it not an allowed use? Right. Yeah. And, and arguably, it would counter, you would as drafted, it would, it would get rid of our medical marijuana uh, district. As well. Really? Yeah. Have to work so hard. The chief just wanted to help I have a different idea, but I don't have it for tonight. So um, then, so the last thing I guess is, um, so just keep April third. Just sort of keep April third in your mind as if that we're probably going to meet. Uh, and then, the last thing is, yeah, the mending wall thing. 
So uh, I wasn't here for this, so I have no idea what this was about. Yeah, so it, it, it kind of became defunct many years ago. We still have like that, what is it, $1,700 in the balance. If you look on the next page, you'll see why it's hard to get in contact with this well, fellow. Well, first off, here's my, my question yeah. to yeah. our yeah. All right, we took the subdivision for back taxes. We took the, the, the residents on that property for back taxes. I don't necessarily know that this shouldn't have gone with the back taxes that weren't paid. But that's what I talked with Kathleen McCarthy, who is in charge of the um, treasurer basically here. Um, and she feels the same way. She says, she said, uh, as far as she's concerned, we should just. Uh, well, that's money, right. Just transfer the money. That's right. Thank you. Because it stays towards, with the town. The before I do any of that, I would ask the attorney, our attorney, about it, our town attorney about it, to find out what what the what would be the law on it. Yeah. But I do think, as if you're willing to take someone's house and you're going to take their land, I would assume the money that's there for that subdivision is also part of that. Stays with the land or goes to the town to pay back taxes. Well, I'm just, what do you I, think well, that's why I think that's your account. I think you should cut a check for seventeen hundred and seven bucks and go find them. Yeah, but who are you going to give? Who are you going to give it to? Yeah. Whoever the estate of the attorney is talking about, it's chunk change. No, who's, I understand that. Money Which is a thousand dollars to get an opinion about how to get rid of seventeen hundred. That's bring it up to the break. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make sense. I don't understand. Who You're not going to find one. Yeah, that's part of the challenge. It seems like. Nobody from yeah. Maryland told me. I mean, I tried to call. Yeah. 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 I mean, this guy, the, de Boston. the developer, basically got, got disbarred. As you can, yeah. if you read that thing, he got disbarred for various activities. Um, and so, from what Maryland told me, uh, even like his relatives aren't quite sure how to get in touch with him. Apparently. Um, well, who's in charge of course, the charity? Who's seeking the request? Well, I haven't read this one. Well, no, no one's asked for it. Well, it's a yeah. planning board seeking to get rid of the money. Well, no one's asking for it. If nobody's asking for it, then they might. Yeah. yeah, I guess we're going to. You don't have a request for the funds. It's right. Yeah, not at all. How just, did this come to your attention? I was just looking at the record. I was just looking at for seven years. I would just leave it. Make a motion. No, wait, wait. No, 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 don't make a motion yet. No, one, one more question. One more question for the board. Just that there's been talk of a moratorium on multi unit housing. There's been a motion uh, by the uh, board of selectmen to put a moratorium on multi unit housing in Pembroke. Period. Uh, haven't seen anything on the amount of time that they want that moratorium. But again, that would have to be a zoning change, in which case it would need um, us right. to go before so, the town meeting. So it would be helpful if maybe we drafted a letter to the Board of Selectmen telling them if they would like to do such a thing, that they come talk to us about it. Or and have us come talk to them. Because it would have to get noticed, it would have to have a public hearing yeah. before the town made, meeting. They, they, there was a vote taken at the uh, after the public hearing for the 40B that happened about a month ago, and then I believe there was another vote taken at a subsequent Board of Selectmen meeting on the same thing, and I don't think it holds any water because no. it didn't come from us. But I think people ought to know that in, in the local press, they're talking about a moratorium on multi-family, multi-unit housing in Pembroke, and nothing's been before the planning board on that issue. What does the state they're say? They're too late anyway. They're getting too Doesn't late. matter what the state they says. Can they can't the, do it. They can't do it. They can't do it. In the fall. But it, 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 it may be helpful if we had some communication to the fact that... If it's a response to 40B, it's no it's response. Not it's no defense. Because if it's in the zoning bylaws and 40B exclusively renders you effectively uh, you know, helpless, yeah, then you, no matter what you put in there for a zoning bylaw, you can get around it using a 40B. Right. No, but, I, but I think the other concern was that on Route 53, there's sort of a constellation of multifamily that's housing. That's CBA. And right. the concern it's, is that it's that not. Hand. Well, the, that's what well, I read. What, but it's not a hand? Well, but let's. let's it's been that way for 15 right. years. Right. Let's, also be, let's also be, you know, direct about it. Uh, the ZBA is an appointed board of the selectmen. Yeah. So if they're unhappy with the decisions the ZBA is making, yeah, maybe matter. they should be talking about the appointments they've been making to the ZBA. Um, and maybe if they want some sort of zoning bylaw changes that would address multi unit housing in Pembroke, they should talk to the planning board. Mm -hmm. All you're going to do is eliminate it, but not Well, I guess part of it is that sometimes the way that larger 
um, multifamily developments are getting in is because they are getting variances. Correct. And well, so the question so is Case whether again, or not. Twenty century. So the question is whether or not the ZBA understands the guidance of the govern of, the, of their appointing board. Correct. In terms of multi units. And, and, you know and I think that brings me to, we had talked about having a meeting between the planning board and the ZBA with town council to talk about variances and special permits. Where do we stand on that? Is, do, thought, what I do we need to Dan do to bring was, that forward? I thought Dan was pursuing that. Um, it really, it should be him pursuing that, the chair should pursue that. With, with, with the ZBA? ZBA yeah. And find a date? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll add number one because we have to pay for the lawyer to come in to... I think we've already gotten them to say that would, was a good idea. Right, but they have, they have to put it on. Right. Yeah, I mean, Joel Bart, I mean, it was a few months ago, but Joel Bart did did suggest it actually himself. He said, you know, it might be a good idea for me to come in and, and talk to the, the ZBA. But it would be important, I think, as part of that, to have a member of the Board of Selectmen maybe sit in on that, since they are the appointing authority for the ZBA, right. and since they have been, they've just Passed a non-binding, obviously moratorium mm -hmm. on multi-unit housing. Actually, can't the can't the selectmen intervene in a decision? Um, I'm not sure yet. they can because the ZBA has no. the authority to grant or deny. Yeah. the The board of selectmen can um, appoint a different ZBA member, um, but I don't think they can overrule the ZBA. Can they? No, I don't think so. State law is pretty clear. Actually, can you appeal a ZBA decision to the Board of Selectmen? No. No. We have no appeal authority over the ZBA. So, so, so we need to work on, I think the, the answer to that too, maybe could, that could be discussed in the context of that meeting, if yeah. we can get that to happen soon. But I think it needs to be addressed, because publicly, this has happened twice publicly. <laughs> so I think it needs to be addressed yeah, with the board of selectmen. Yeah, so would yeah. you like to see? Are we asking that Matt send a letter to yeah. the board of selectmen There's from the indicating no. that the planning board would like to discuss the proposals we're hearing no. with regard to a moratorium on multi-unit um, developments in town, as these would require a zoning bylaw change, um, and which would require a vote of the planning board and 